please pray with me? God of us all, we are gathered here today for fun and for fellowship and for fireworks, but also we gather to never forget those who have sacrificed to protect and defend the freedoms we enjoy. We ask your blessing upon those military families who are here today. We are blessed for their sharing so much of themselves for the sake of this nation, along with the sacrifices made by their loved ones who are spread across the world. Grant strength and safety to all those currently serving in our armed forces, who with their very lives are protecting the precious gift of liberty. Protect them and keep them, Lord God, that we may be a thankful nation and honor their work in the world. We give you thanks that you are especially near to those who in the last full measure of devotion gave their lives so that we might be free. We trust that their sacrifice will never be in vain. God of compassion and grace, today we pray for those who lead us. Uplift them and guide them in righteous paths. We give thanks for President and Dr. Biden and Secretary and Mrs. Austin who are hosting us today. Be with them in their work and in their leadership of this country. Eternal God, as we celebrate the forming of this nation, ensure we never take for granted those great and mighty blessings you have endowed us with. We humbly acknowledge that there is still so much work to be done. There are still dreams that are unfolding and horizons yet unexplored. You have been present in our darkest hours of this country's history and our greatest achievements and triumphs. Through it all, you have been weaving together our story. You loved us when we have failed to love each other and ourselves. We trust that you will continue to hold us in the story of this country that is yet unwritten so that we might always live by your example. Finally, Almighty God, remind us all that we share in the love that we have for this country and for you. Cure our divisions. Shape the love we have into a desire to work together for a more perfect union. In moments such as this, you have always given a double portion of determination, resiliency, and courage to face the moment at hand. We plead with you to do that once more. Revive us again. As we mark what has been, what is, and what is yet to come, we ask all this in your name, God Almighty, for you are a God of love. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Reverend Lee, the President and I are so grateful for your ministry. Thank your love and your support. Rob, thank you for joining us today and for your special blessing. Joining Forces, my White House initiative that supports military and veteran families, caregivers, and survivors is only possible because of the amazing organizations like the USO. And this barbecue is an example of the work we do together to support our military and their families. Thank you. Welcome to the White House and the happy 4th of July. When I was a little girl, a photo of my dad in a uniform always caught my eye when I visited my grandmom's house. We didn't really speak about it, but its very placement made it stand out. And as I grew older, I learned the story. At 17 years old, my father decided he wanted to fight in World War II. But he was too young to enlist, and he had to get my grandmom's permission. She was terrified to send her teenage son to war, but ultimately she signed the papers. It was a hard choice, but one they made because they loved each other and our country. Service is often about those hard choices, the ones our service members make, and the ones that their families do too. I only truly understood that choice when our son, Bo, joined the Delaware Army National Guard and went to war for a year in Iraq. All of you have made that same choice to serve our country. You're the brave and the bold who step forward for all of us. You're the spouses who always cheer twice as loud at soccer tournaments and hug twice as hard at birthdays to try to fill that empty space beside you. 
You're the military kids who save up all your stories to share during that one precious video call. Today's firework displays and barbecues, these celebrations in our freedoms, our democracy, are only possible because of your service and sacrifice. As a military mom, grandmom, and the daughter of a veteran, I want to let you know how much you all mean to me and to your Commander-in-Chief. We love you and we are so proud of you. Now please help me welcome the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin. Well, happy 4th of July, everyone. All right. Happy 4th. <laughs> happy Independence Day. Yes. Happy Independence Day. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, thanks for hosting us. And Dr. Biden, thanks for your kind introduction. And thanks for being a champion of our military families. Thank you. It's great to be here at the White House on the 4th. And it's great to celebrate with so many outstanding military families. The United States has the strongest fighting force on Earth. And that's because of all of you. You know, I had a brief 41-year career in uniform. So I know how much our military families do for America. You serve right alongside our troops, and you make huge sacrifices. That means repeated moves, new jobs, new schools, and it means missing and worrying about a loved one deployed far away. So we are determined to give you the support that you deserve. Taking care of people is a top priority for the Department of Defense and for me personally. So we secured a pay raise of almost 10% over the past two years. Yes. We're helping military spouses pursue their own careers. Yeah. We're making quality child care more affordable. Yeah. We're, we're running world-class DoDEA schools, and we're making moves a little easier. And we're cutting prices at the commissary. And, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's happy with that. Yeah. And we're working hard to improve your health care. You know, I'm proud of the work that we've done and what we've achieved, but we've still got a lot more to do. And we won't let up. So I want to say thanks to you. Thanks for all that you do for our country. Thanks for your resilience. And thanks for being the foundation of our military and for helping preserve the independence that we celebrate today. Ladies and gentlemen, our Commander-in-Chief has always stood up for our troops, our military families, and our veterans. It is my honor to introduce the President of the United States. Happy Independence Day! At least the rain helped the humidity a little bit. Jill and I, Secretary Austin, Mrs. Austin, we're honored. So many of your families are here in this special day. I really, really mean it. You represent only 1%, not quite 1% of the American population, but you keep 99% of the rest of the population safe. It's you. You're all volunteers. You do it. And you know, I got in trouble for saying this years and years ago, but I make no apologies for it. We have many obligations as the government, but only one truly sacred obligation, sacred. Prepare those we send into harm's way and to care for them and their families when they come home and when they don't, their families. We've got a long way. We're all part of that long chain of patriots that stretches back to our nation's founding, that's given life to the very idea of America. On this day, I think it's important we remember, America is unique in all every, — every president says this about their country, but we're unique in the world for a lot of reasons. But the one main reason is we're the only nation on Earth founded on an idea, not ethnicity, not geography, not anything else, on an idea. And the idea is contained in the we hold these truths to be self-evident. 
that all men and women are created equal, endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. We mean it. We've never fully lived up to it. We've never, ever, ever walked away from it. That's because of you. As your Commander-in-Chief, along with the Vice President of the Secretary of Defense, I want to thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Let me close with this. Last month, Jill and I traveled to Normandy, France, to commemorate the 80th anniversary of D-Day. We met with American veterans, some of them about 12 or 14, over 102 years old, veterans who toured those. We toured the battlegrounds, went to the cemeteries, and looked at what was happening. There should be no question, no question about it. All those who served as members of the military were heroes, genuine heroes, heroes for freedom, democracy, and America. Look, now, decades later, we have to look at ourselves and ask the question, will we stand for freedom again? Will we stand for democracy? Will we stand together as Americans? I believe we will and we can. And by the way, you know, I was in that World War I cemetery at, in France, and uh, the one that my, one of our colleagues, the former president, didn't want to go and be up there. I probably shouldn't even say it. Anyway, <laughs> we got to just remember who in the hell we are. We're the United States of America. Yeah. Not, and there's nothing, nothing beyond, and I mean this in the bottom of my heart, there is nothing beyond our capacity, nothing when we do it together, not a single thing. We're the only nation in the history of the world that has gone through every crisis and come out stronger than we went into the crisis every single time. And by the way, I've been all over the world with you. I've been in and out of battle. Anyway, you're incredible. Understand, you are the finest fighting force in the history of the world. That's not hyperbole. In the history of the world, there's never been another military as powerful, as decent, and as giving as our military. I'm so damn proud to be your commander in chief. Happy Fourth of July. May God bless you all, and may God protect our troops.